What's up guys? In today's video we're going to be going over how you can set up a podcast using whatever equipment you have. This is going to be starting with easy equipment such as phones and things that you already have and progressing up the ladder with each one um, whether it be audio, visual or editing so we can go over the basic easy stuff to the more advanced stuff as well. We're going to be splitting this into three sections. It's going to be the audio section so how we can sort out your audio, your visual section including lighting and cameras and editing because of course you've got to be able to edit your footage as well. So let's start with number one which is going to be audio. Audio is an important one because people have to hear your voice. People aren't really going to stick around for a video where your audio is crackly, you can't really hear it, or you can't turn it up loud enough to hear the voice. So let's go through some of the steps um, that I started with and then progressed to with the audio. To get started, you can actually get started with your phone. Most phones have a voice recorder app on them, or you can download one on your app store. These usually include settings such as the interview setting, which will record on the top and the bottom mic for when two people are talking. And you can of course use headphones with a mic in this case. By connecting your headphones with the mic to your phone, you can then hit record and then record your voice, especially if you're just recording yourself. Simply placing a phone in front of you and using the same option um, will also record it decently well. It will usually get background noise and perhaps it might be a little bit crackly. I wouldn't suggest just using the mic on an open laptop or a PC or something like that unless you have a microphone. Usually they tend to get a whole range of sounds. Next up we go to USB mics. These are by far the most popular because they're super easy to set up. You can get them for um, a variety of price range. I mean starting from probably about 10 or 15 pounds all the way up to a couple of hundred pounds or you know close to a thousand depending. However um, these are a great way to get started. You don't really have to configure them. Most computers, Macs, you know laptops you can just plug them in with a USB and they usually plug and play. Um, you know the whole install a bit will come up with the window it'll ask you whether you want to use it for your mic and you do. These are great for when you're recording yourself. They come with different stands, whether it be a bending stand that can come in, a podcast style stand, or simply one that you put on the desk in front of you. There is one problem with USB mics though, which is using multiple of them isn't as easy. For instance, with Windows, if you plug in two mics to your computer, that's usually not possible unless you have some other program that can split the mics, but splitting two USB mics isn't the easiest thing to do. You can, of course, do this by recording one on each laptop on each computer, but then, you know, you end up with loads of laptops and computers. So one of the workaround um, using a Mac um, is using an aggregate. So if you do have a Mac computer you can open up your audio MIDI and by plugging two USBs in you can add or create what's called an aggregate. An aggregate is different input sources coming into one. There's going to be a ton of videos um, if I try and use the one that I found myself and I'll link that in the description. But essentially you're adding two USB power sources um, or audio sources. You're creating what's called an aggregate to add both audio sources into and then it's then putting them out as one stream. You can then go ahead and control each source by downloading something on the Mac called something like GarageBand that works pretty well. You can then control each sound source so you can make sure it's sounding just perfect. Now we get to, you know, trying to get around this complication without having to set up aggregates, perhaps you don't have a Mac, but you want to get multiple people recorded, like a podcast or just multiple people in a video. This is where the next option is pretty good at the price point, which is wireless mics. I'm actually using one right now. The reason for this is that you get them in pairs of two or four, you can I think also get singular ones, and you can plug them all into one source. For instance, you can get a pack of four mics that you can attach to four people, whether it's on their shirt, their hat, wherever it is. You plug your USB receiver um, into your laptop, or it can go usually into your phones. It usually comes with a Samsung connection and an iPhone connection or an audio jack. So you can really plug it into your camera, your phone. They've made it very accessible in terms of where you can plug the receiver into. However, it then picks up the audio and it puts it into one sound file. I've not had great luck trying to separate these sound files, but you know, if you're recording four people and you can really get started for quite cheap I mean for £20 you can pick up a pair of two so that's two people you can record for £20 that comes with the receivers the wireless mics little charger kits so you know it's a very inexpensive way of getting started for a podcast or recording multiple people next up we have the more complicated version which is recording with mics an audio interface and then you know recording it onto somewhere like a laptop and a PC we won't be going over the whole process but I will explain how that works you first need a wired mic and um, with some sort of connector usually comes with different jacks on it that will fit into different connections into the audio interface. You have to be careful with the mics because some mics have to be powered. I, I'm not sure if it's the condenser or not the condenser, but one of them is usually, um, you know, you, you can't drop it, it's very sensitive and it also needs a power source. So just be aware of this because, you know, it gets a bit complicated here because if you've got um, a, a mic which needs a power source, maybe your audio interface doesn't have a ghost pack to it, I think it's called a ghost power pack. So you might have to think of getting a separate ghost power pack which will then power your mics. 
The most simple way that I've done it, and I'll see if I can find the actual video of the guys who showed it, a very underrated channel because you know they, they do a great job of explaining it, um, but you're going to get yourself a couple of wired mics and just make sure that the jack is correct, e.g. the bit that goes into the back of the audio interface that we're just about to talk about. I've actually found some pretty good bargains here where each mic is about £19 at the moment, so you know four mics will be about £80 or just under. They come with the correct wire. I will leave the link in the description because I'm pretty sure I still got them on my Amazon list. Then you need your audio interface. The audio interface is basically where you can plug your mics into. That will then, you know, convert it, put it into a USB, which will then go into your laptop, PC, or whatever else. Now the thing, or the key thing is here is to make sure that your audio interface has enough ports for your mics. You might find a great bargain for like 50 or 100 pounds, However, it might only have two mic sources, so then if you want to add three or four, that's not going to work. So two things to research here is, um, you know, where the mic goes into, is it the right size, do you need to get an adapter from the end of your mic uh, going into the audio interface, will it fit, does it need a ghost power pack. So I'm just going to leave a link in the description of pretty much the complete package for if you want to do that through Amazon. Um, it's one that I'm actually using myself and it works pretty good and that's anything up to four people so the audio interface which is around £140 at the moment will fit four mics. Um, I'll add the four mics that will fit in there as well. I'm pretty sure it comes with the rest of the adapters if it doesn't I'll leave the link in the description. Um, however what happens then is the four mics go into the audio interface that comes out through a wire um, and then goes to you know let's say a laptop which might again be running GarageBand or some sort of you know some program or software that you like to use to control your audio. That's probably going to be the best method in terms of not letting you down. Um, wireless mics do have a habit of letting you down sometimes. Perhaps you might record a whole podcast and realize that one out of three was making a buzzing sound. That's never fun. Um, and that can really happen with, <laughs> I've used anything from like 20 pounds one to 200 pound ones. Um, and all of, well not all of them, but you know, something usually will go wrong. So uh, whether it's a small thing or just make sure that you check as you record is basically the best thing to do. Now guys, we're on to visual. Uh, visual includes lighting and video because you're gonna need both. Uh, get some stuff off my list here. Lighting, part one, lights around your house. Everybody has some lights around the house. Usually they're not incredible and they will leave the shadow. That's because lights are put above you. Uh, so, you know, if you're wearing a hat, for instance, for me, it's going to leave a great big shadow on my face, making a lot of dark images. You can first of all combat this with lights around the house. Perhaps you have different lampshades, you know, little bendy lamps. Um, one thing about this is that they usually have like a more yellowy tinge to the light. So just be aware of that. You can get different bulbs that are a bit more white. This really can vary. I mean, I've been creative over the years. I've used anything from fairy lights to, you know, little funny stands. You can also get quite cheap from like pound stretcher shops, you know, little, little panels for lights that you can put right in front of you. Or of course, ring lights, you know, they're about 20 pounds, sometimes upwards. Which brings me on to studio lights, which is the second option. Now, the thing is here that you have you know, a lot of different options within this. You have your ring light, um, which usually you can get quite cheap. You can get it anywhere 15, 20 pounds. If you look on Facebook market, you can probably find your neighbor selling it for like, you know, five or 10. Problem is with ring lights is they don't give a huge amount of light off. Um, you know, they give a decent amount if you're quite close proximity. If the room's quite dark, you know, they're all right. They do have different color ranges though. So, you know, between yellow and whitish, some of them have colors, but it's pretty much gonna be your first step. After that, you're gonna move on to like put up lights. Um, I've got a couple of pairs of these because they actually work really well. They're basically like studio lights that come up and down, but they're a bit cheaper on the price range. I mean, we're talking anywhere between 50 and 80 pound depending. I know the prices have gone up recently, so it's a bit closer to 80 pound. Um, but usually you can get a pair of two with the stands, uh, the bulbs, you know, the studio lighting casing and like a front cover as well. These provide a decent light. It's the right white light. And of course it protects your eyes as well. So if it was just a bulb with no cover, you know, it'd hurt to be looking forward for this long. From then, you know, you move up the scale with the lighting how you want to use it, um, of course, where you use it as well. It's usually better to have a couple of lights because having one right in front of you usually creates shadows. You like to get each corners. You know, if you can get an above or behind you light, that's great as well. Usually you tend to cover three points with the lighting and studio lights with them sort of light bulbs will work the best because, you know, they're really white light and they, they, they really make the room sort of stand out, go a lot brighter, especially if your camera's not that great. Or even if your camera is that great and it's struggling to pick up with, uh, you know, with, with darkness, they're not great with darkness, you know. So as we move up the ladder, you can then, you know, go from anywhere 200 pound onwards, you know, anything up to a thousand pound more. Um, one of the things that I would suggest 
is if you're going to be getting one of the lights with the you know the LED screens, you know controllable at the back, and they got all these fancy options, is just make sure that you don't get a really cheap one. These are just imitations. They're basically going to be like the cheap ones that you get from like a pound shop, you know, a couple of pound shop. Um, with a little LED screen, usually something breaks, the LEDs aren't put together, the soldering isn't great, so don't go for the super cheap versions of them. If you're going to pay more money to get something like that, um, just pay more money, save for a little bit longer, um, or just get some of the cheaper, cheaper studio lights that are put up, they, they really do work fantastically. A couple of tips on lighting, I think I've already said, is always have um, three points of lighting so you know there there sometimes right in front of you sometimes you might want um, the back of you to be shown a little bit better for instance if i have a light around the back of me uh, you sort of glow around your shoulders making you pop out a little bit from the background of course i haven't done the greatest job here this has been a bit of a <laughs> A bit of a quick video but as you can see you know I've got shadow there shadow there so you know mine can definitely be made better however I'm recording on a bit of a time limit so you know we'll stick with it part two video very important to make a video you need a camera or something to be able to record yourself of course like in most cases you can start with your phone um, in fact most phones as long as you have the capacity to record for that long come with a great camera um, some tips here is if you go to your phone settings um, to actually understand them, you have, I think it's U, UHD um, and FHD or something like that. Anyway, one's high uh, full definition, so you know 180p. Uh, the one starting with the U is ultra high definition, e.g. 4K. You then usually have the two types of um, frames per second. That's either going to be, you know, like 50 frames per second or 25 frames per second. That really depends on your ed editing capability or, or your software, sorry. So, you know, if your PC can handle... Uh, because the file is going to be larger because it's 25 frames a second more uh, for each second you're recording so you know it depends on you know what your editor can deal with that however obviously you know changing from FHD you can you can usually tell the difference UHD which is 4k is, is a lot nicer for turning um, however I find using the full HD option on 60 frames per second records pretty well or 50 frames per second in fact I think phones usually do 60 cameras usually go for 50 so it just depends if you want to go to frames per second to 25 it's not usually a bad one but if you're, you're doing a lot of motion like this perhaps it might not pick up so clearly either way phones are a great way to get started started um, you get so many phone stands that are so cheap you can just sit it up right in front of you and it pretty much you can record in 4k um, it's just the fact of transferring a lot of my transferring you can either use the, the actual charger wire if you've got one that is transfer capable um, or just use one drive usually gives you something like 5 gig um, Google Drive gives you like a free 15 gigabyte for every Google account so you can easily transfer from your phone uh, to a computer source next up up the ladder I'd usually say and uh, it's how I started is usually using Canon cameras because they're they're the cameras that have a good quality compared to price so you, you can pick one up for like let's say 300 pound or you know second hand for 100 to 200 pound depending on the, the quality again probably a Facebook market job however these give you a great color Canon really great for color um, and you know much better video quality well depending on your phone you know if your phone's really capable it maybe it won't be as good quality but it's a great camera to get started as a standalone camera first now there's some pros and cons with this Canon's do come with great color that's one thing I've got to say I mean they actually if I was filming this video with a Canon camera it's much more vivid a lot nicer than actually this one this one's a very expensive camera so great for colors however one thing that they do lack or a couple of things that they lack the auto focusing like some of the older versions the D650D has an auto focus version however it's very slow which means every time you move it blurs in and blurs out um, and you can hear the auto focus so you know if you've got like audio you can hear this all the time very annoying and then like you know like the the 2000D that's got really crisp clear picture however it struggles uh, with the same thing in fact this one doesn't even have an autofocus you've just got to focus your person so you know canons aren't as great for filming moving stuff moving scenes however if you're just recording yourself like this in one place it's pretty great for that the colors really great and it just picks up very nicely they usually pick up audio as well but it, you know it's not great because obviously it's a smaller camera it's not meant for recording like a mic however it's good enough to cross reference your mic your camera and your editor and put them both together so some of the cons um you know obviously are the fact that the auto focus with some of them another one is the 12 minute limit some cameras can record continuously so you know it'll go to 12 minutes and it'll stop now the older camera that i have the 650d will then continuously record to another file however the newer camera that i have the 2000d won't it will just stop recording at 12 minutes so if you're doing a podcast or something like that 
um, it, you know, and then it suddenly shuts off after 12 minutes. You might have missed it for a minute, and then you've, you know, you've got to go back on yourself. That can be quite annoying. So we move on to the next stage, which is usually in the 500 pound to 1,000 pound region. Usually between, you know, you can get for around six or 700. Um, you can get some good quality cameras. You can get like Lumix as a nice one. You've got some nice Panasonic cameras as well. You know, like a vlogging style camera. Um, usually again just be wary just to pay the right amount so usually if it's between like six to eight hundred pounds you're paying the right amount for a nice camera especially if it's you know them them actual brands if it's camera that looks like them cameras but it's for 200 pound you know again i can't verify all of them but they're probably not going to work that well or for very long or the components are cheap so you end up spending more in the long run because you're going to need another camera i really do suggest just looking at the reviews just look at the reviews uh, make sure they're proper reviews by reading a lot of them check out the picture reviews video reviews i think the lumix mark ii is one that we have that's a really good one i can't remember we do, we do have a very nice panasonic one as well um the seacoast the seacoast presents uh, so i'm part of the media team there and uh, you know we record all the time so we have a variety and you know th there's some of the good ones i'll see if i can find which ones there i'll get a picture up or something to the link in the description after that you then move on to like you know bigger cameras the one that i'm filming on now for instance is much higher in the price range however you know it mitigates a lot of these problems it can record for longer it's got larger battery it can do 4k hd you can change all the settings it's got a lot more settings you can add the audio or the mic plugged straight into the camera you know you can multiple you can use multiple sd card so you can record for much longer and continuously it's got many more options you know and accessories that you can add on it but however you're then you know going to be paying at least like a thousand five hundred or eight hundred second hand maybe more than two thousand pounds you know new definitely more than two thousand pounds so it really depends on your price range uh, but you know to be honest at the end of the day it doesn't really matter how expensive your camera is as long as you've got everything right around you for instance you could have just started with your phone and a couple of great lights so you're lit you're lit up you've got 4k on your phone and um, or hd you've got the choice of as long as you get yourself a little stand you're pretty good next up we move on to editing so you know you got your audio you got your visual so you got that stuff set up how do you actually edit videos especially if you've never edited before and you're not really sure how um, the first one of how I got started is actually phone apps that you know they do great things some phone apps some of my phone apps like games are a bit of a waste of time however you know stuff like UCut uh, for Samsung or Android phones that's a great one I've actually I still use that now it's the only app that I've kept because um, it's you know so easy to edit videos when you get started anything from like chopping them up um, adding other clips on top adding audio little transitions whoops my light just come down crisis averted so, so uh, apps like that are great to get started with um, you know obviously when you're recording with multiple cameras and stuff like that let's say you're doing a podcast and recording on lots of different angles maybe not so easy however you can cut videos on there works really well usually exporting in HD um, or 4k um, and I, I don't know the name for the one on the iPhone however there is another version which you can use next up is the free video editor that you get on stuff like Windows and Mac anyway or you can just download like video editors. These are simple but very effective um, and I usually would suggest them to get started with because it gives you just a great simple introduction into editing your videos you know about cutting clips so you don't have to leave an entire video of you chatting um, you know without editing middle bits of silence you know it'll, it makes it easy you know with little cut markers you can cut it, delete little clips, condense them, you know, and make a much better video. So definitely something to get started on. And then once you've got started and you start to get the basic skills of editing, you know, cutting bits, you know, adding transitions, maybe changing a color here or two, you might then be looking to edit with something a little bit better. Um, a free version of this is something called DaVinci Resolve, but if you do search best free video editors, you're going to get a massive list. DaVinci is usually always on there. The free version is very comprehensive and it has loads of editing things from audio to visual. Um, it's a great one. I still edit with it now. It's a little bit, I mean, the transition from going to basic editor to that isn't too hard in terms of you can just start on your, you know, the first screen, which makes it easy. You're basically just cutting, moving, and you're getting used to the program. After that, DaVinci tutorials are super good. I mean, I, I make tutorials myself and I was actually surprised with DaVinci tutorials when I started watching them how good they can be because all the creators realize that you want something short, snappy and telling you what to do. And that's what they've done. You know, most uh, tutorials will be about a minute to two minutes long. You learn it like that. After you've done it a couple of times, you know, you get better. Uh, but, you know, using DaVinci, you can do stuff like green screening, again, changing anything on the audio, even correcting stuff getting background noise off so it's a great free alternative and then when you want to go full with DaVinci you only have a one-time
time sort of time that you pay it's around two just over two hundred dollars and um, so it's not a monthly fee however if you're looking for something a little bit better you can obviously either get the paid version of DaVinci but also you got Premiere Pro which is like a monthly subscription usually it's about 20 pound a month um, or it was last time I checked uh, Premiere Pro is great because it comes with loads of features just like DaVinci plus you get you know in essence because you're paying you get a few more features already added once you got it of course you are paying a thing per month so it depends on your price point and what you can afford at this point but you know DaVinci is a great one to just get for free anyway there's a great editor you just need a PC that's actually able to you know or capable to host it and use it so guys that was that was a long video I don't normally do <laughs> videos this long um, but I think we've got over everything if you do have any questions let me know down in the comments you can also you know hit me up seek a host um, again, part of the media team, we're here to help for people as well. So James at seekhost.co.uk um, if you're also looking for help that way. But on the most part, leave me a comment. I'll get back to you. 